This is not an offering to sell a franchise. Franchise offerings are made through the franchise disclosure document. Ask for details. Don't waste your time barking up the wrong tree. Fetch the perfect franchise opportunity with Pet Supplies Plus. Named the number one pet franchise by Entrepreneur Magazine for eight years running. Invest in a top dog and enjoy a 2.4 million AUV as a franchise owner. Get your paws on a rewarding franchise opportunity in a billion dollar industry by visiting PetSuppliesPlusFranchising.com. That's PetSuppliesPlusFranchising.com. Hi guys, hi guys, hi guys, Dr. Wendy Dearborn is in the house. Well guys, welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of You and the Laws of Attraction. Guys, today is Tuesday the 2nd of March 2021 and the hour is 11 a.m. Well, guys, welcome to the show and the show or this podcast is called You and the Laws of Attraction. My name once again is Dr. Wendy Dearborn and I will be your host for the next mm, 35 to 60 minutes, somewhere in between. I'm going to say nothing longer than that, but who knows? The one thing about a podcast is you can put it on pause. You can listen at your leisure. So that being said, what is this show all about? Well, today we're talking about getting what you want using the laws, and that's the laws, plural, of attraction. So today's show really is about just insights into you being able to utilize the laws, plural, laws of attraction to make manifest or bring into tangible form or bring into physical form, if that's the form that you're looking for, the things that you are wanting for your life. And that can be um, money, it can be um, people, places, things, it's anything, anything that can be manifested to be brought into your life. So once again, a welcome to the podcast. My name's Dr. Wendy Dearborn and I am a choice and a laws laws of attraction in action expert. So when I say a laws of attraction, I mean laws, plural. I am a choice expert in that I support people in getting clarity around their choices, what they are truly wanting. You know, the choices that are buried sometimes deep within. And I support people in creating the right kind of um, energetic, the, the right kind of energy to manifest what they want. And that right kind of energy is the ability to use the laws of attraction to their best ability so they support you in getting what you want. I also help people to understand the laws, the different laws of attraction that are out there, like the laws of silence, the law of space, and that's huge. The law of um, mm, re, uh, reciprocal relationships, the law of reversed effort, the law of balance. There are so many laws out there. And as Florence Scrovel Shin says, and I call her my Auntie Flo, quite as it's kept. So as Auntie Flo says, and that's Florence Scrovel Shin, one of my mentors who um, who are no longer here with us in this dimension, but it's definitely been a mentor for me, says that we are constantly making laws for ourselves by the words that we are speaking and the thoughts that we have and the desires and the passion. We are constantly invoking and making laws for ourselves. And these laws, these laws are the things that will create that which we have in our life. So, well, today's today's show, once again, is getting what you want and getting what you want and using the laws of attraction and using them correctly so that you can get what you want. So you have an understanding. You know, one of the things, and guys, I promise to stay on point and on topic, but just roll with me. One of the things that I hear a lot is, yes, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. 
Well, you know, guys, the laws of attraction, the laws of creation, which is what they are, they're always working. And they're not some time-ish, guys. They are not some time-ish at all. What is some time-ish is our ability to create consciously that which we say that we want. And our inability to do this is because we don't know or understand how to use the laws and how they work. Well, as I just said, Florence Grove Shin says, number one, we are always making laws for ourselves by, by what we think, by what we say, by, by um, our desires, our thoughts, our imaginations. And our imagination is huge when you start talking about the laws of attraction. Absolutely huge. Our beliefs, our truths, our trust, all these things impact our ability to, to manifest consciously and on a regular basis that which we say that we want. As a choice expert, once again, I support you in getting clarity and then the understanding of what is needed for life to happen for you. And that's another thing. I don't believe life happens to you. Life happens for you. And life can only happen for you because you are always exercising the first law in the laws of attraction, which is the law of choice. So guys, once again, welcome to the show. We're talking about getting what you want and using the laws of attraction to actually to do this. There is a simple methodology to getting what you want when using the laws of attraction. And before I go on, as I said, I'm going to try and stay on point and on topic, guys. So, you know, I'm going to say, yeah, don't hold me to that 100%. The laws, the law of attraction has been erroneously sold to us as the bill of goods. What people don't understand, once again, is it is the laws, plural, of attraction. The omission of that S, omitting that S, has been detrimental to so many people because they think it's just one thing. You know, if you take, for instance, prayer, people think that, you know, you just um, utter these words and, you know, you, you punctuate the prayer by saying amen and it's a done deal. People don't know the true ins and outs of prayer. Prayer is a bonding of your word. But before I get off on that tangent, because that's a whole nother show by itself, before I get off on that tangent, it's important to understand that prayer is, if you will, a five pronged or a five universal laws process. You know, you have to visualize, you have to see it. And then, and then guys, you have to do other things like maintain that vision and then you, you, you need to be able to, um, forgive. You need to be able to create space, like invoke the universal law of space through forgiveness. So, so the thing that you want has room to come through. You also need to, to make sure that you are utilizing the universal law of gratitude so that you're saying thank you. And then you need to actually affirm the universal law of affirmation itself. So you affirm that which you want so that you can hold that space. You also need to invoke the universal law of silence. You need to go within the silence and do this. You don't need people all in your Kool-Aid. And so this is what I mean, guys, about understanding the universal laws. We've been sold a bill of goods that just doesn't work and it doesn't work because it is not the universal law of attraction it's the universal laws of attraction you know the universal law of attraction is made up of things like gratitude forgiveness love um there are about 20 laws or so that make up the universal law of attraction and if you are out of alignment 
with any of them. What happens is you invoke the universal law of reversed effort, which basically means the last podcast I spoke about this, but which basically means that you're doing something and then you cancel it out by your words, by your thoughts, by your actions, by your deeds, by your newfound belief. You you cancel it out. So it's understanding things like this that will assist and support you in holding on to your dream and your vision, your belief and your truth. So the thing that you want to manifest in your life will manifest. And that you'll be able to do this on a conscious level at any time that you want it. And the manifestation, and right, I'll get right back on topic, but the manifestation relates to anything pertaining to you and your life. Health, wealth, relationships, love, finances, finances, um, people, places and things, absolutely anything. So, okay, guys, let me just ring the bell. I'm getting back on topic. All right, here we go. Uh, getting what you want and how to use the laws of attraction to get it. There is a simple methodology to using the laws of attraction. And it's all in the action that you choose, choice being the first law in the laws of attraction. So it's all in the action that you choose to take. The methodology, and I could really stop the show here. Truth truth be told, the methodology boils down to this. Know what it is that you are wanting and don't get caught up in the how am I going to get there Or how am I going to make this happen? You know... At JCPenney's Memorial Day Sale, sizzling deals are on with storewide doorbusters all weekend. Or bring home savings up to 50% during our Memorial Day home sale. Save even more with your coupon. And for all former and active military personnel, enjoy an extra 10% off in-store. Just show a valid military or VA ID at checkout. Shopping is back. JCPenney. Coupon valid on select styles through 530. Some exclusions apply. Doorbusters valid 526 through 530 and excluded from coupons. See store or jcp.com for details. I was talking to a client this morning and I said to her, it's important that you know your role in the manifestation process. And I own it. It can be a challenge for us because we like to know, we like to have a plan. Even those who say they fly by the seat of their pants, that's their planning method. All right. So we like to know, we like to have a plan and we like to be in control. Most of us above all like to feel at least that we are in control of what's going on. And I said, you need to know your role. And I'm going to say this later on in the show. So bear with me, but you need to know your role in the manifestation process. Know your role. You have to know your role in the manifestation process. And your role is to know what you want. Your role is to then be or invoke the universal law of intuition. You do not need the universal laws or you don't need what I call the reasoning, analytical and logical minds. Because when you're manifesting something, it is something that you don't already have. Your reasoning or your logical analytical and reasoning minds can only give you information based on what you've already experienced and that is not going to help you to manifest what that will do and has the ability to do to do the power to do is to um, knock you off course it has the power to make you second guess yourself So know what you want with clarity, know what you want without reservation, know what you want categorically, know what you want, period, know what you want, full stop, know what you want. So nothing or no one can make you feel any differently. And this is what I was saying to my client this morning. 
you need to also, you know, invoke, as I said, your, your, your intuition. So when your intuition speaks to you, you know, categorically what you were being told and not what you're being told to do. You're given options. Even if your intuition says turn right, even if your intuition says stop, it's an option. It's all in how it's said, but it's an option. And you have the right to either turn right and or stop. This is what your life is made up of. The ability to choose for self in the best interest of self or what you believe the best interest of self is. So, okay, guys. Um, don't get caught up in the how am I going to get there or how am I going to create this thing that I want to manifest? When you actually get caught up in the how am I going to get there, you stop trusting yourself in the universal process. Now, I've said this to many people and they're like, well, ha, Dr. D, what I don't understand is the actual universal process. And I'm going to be honest with you. There are many facets of the universal process I don't understand. And I don't understand because hmm, it's not my... I'm going to say it's not my jurisdiction. I'm going to phrase it that way. And what I'll say by that is I don't understand the process of creation, the actual bringing something into form. I understand my role in that process, but I don't understand how creation does what creation does. You know, how how does a plant truly come into form? Well, yeah, I know all the things that you do, you know, you put the plant, you, you plant the seed, you, you do the whole germination process and you nurture it and you love it. And then it starts growing and then you put it into a bigger pot and or you plant, you transplant it outside and you continue to nurture and let it grow. But what is the energy that literally makes it grow? It needs energy to grow. Yes, you can say it's the sunlight and the moonlight. Fine, we got that. I understand that kind of energy. Uh, the solar and the lunar energy. Got it, understand. But where does that energy come from? And how does the plant know to interact with the, the energy at that level so it will grow? So yeah, I don't always understand the universal process. So for me, that's a really good question. But before I answer that, I'm going to give you something to think about in regard to you and having a greater understanding of the universal process of making things happen. So let, let me let me just ask you this question. What makes you so sure that the sun will rise tomorrow morning? What makes you so sure that the sun will set this evening? What makes you so sure that you're going to see it? Or are you only hoping that you'll see it set? Are you only hoping that you're going to see it rise? Now, if your answer to the question is, what makes you so so sure that the sun's going to rise and, and or the sun's going to set, the moon's going to wax and or the moon's going to wane, that day will change to night and night will change to day, what makes you so sure? And if your answer to me is this, and simply this, and it's, truly something that you believe because it has always been like that and it always will be like that. Or even if you don't know that it will, but you can only hope that it will. This actually tells me that you have somewhere within you an understanding of the universal process and that you trust it. And that you trust it that you trust that process. So guys, stretch your thinking. You trust the process. It's the same way as if you get into your car. When you get into your car and you turn the ignition key on, you expect the car to start up. When you actually get on the road and you start driving, you expect all other drivers on the road to adhere to the laws of driving. You don't expect somebody to be coming the wrong way down a one-way street. Or you don't expect people to be running stop signs, yield signs and or stop lights. You don't expect that. 
Your expectation is that everybody will do what they need to do so everybody can get to where they are going safely. That is trusting the universal process because there's no guarantees. You trust the process. And when the process doesn't go right, it messes with your ability to trust it. So the universal creator of all things, which is known to me as God, and you've heard me say this, which is known to me as the living God within me. The function is to bring forth that which you have claimed to say that you want to experience in your life. So the universal creator of all things, the God, that the living God within me, the function is the creative portion of manifesting. The, 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 the bit that I just spoke about, not understanding how a plant seed does what it does. How does the sun know what the plant needs? How does the, 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 the seed know what to take from the plant? And how does it do that through the dirt? How does it do, do that through the barrier of the dirt? So the universal creator of all things, once again, known to me as God, its function is to bring forth the things that I have claimed to want, to experience in my life. And this applies to you too. It's about what you are wanting to experience in and for your life. Now, be really clear that experience can be something tangible or intangible. It can be something that is physical and or um, mental or emotional, if you will. Or it can be psychological or something that has a physiological structure. One of the important things to know here, and I'm going to ring the bell, guys. All right, take note. One of the most important things to recognize here and to understand, the experience is about the feeling. Here we go again. At JCPenney's Memorial Day sale, sizzling deals are on with storewide doorbusters all weekend. Or bring home savings up to 50% during our Memorial Day home sale. Save even more with your coupon. And for all former and active military personnel, enjoy an extra 10% off in-store. Just show a valid military or VA ID at checkout. Shopping is back. JCPenney. Coupon valid on select styles through 530. Some exclusions apply. Doorbusters valid 526 through 530 and excluded from coupons. See store or jcp.com for details. The experience is about the feeling. Everything in your life that you are in a relationship with is about the feeling. If you do not have a feeling about people, places, or certain people, certain places, certain things, there is no relationship. In order for you to have some sort of relationship, it is predicated on how you make yourself feel within that confine. And just while we're at it, only you can make yourself feel a certain way about a certain thing, okay? So once again, only you can make yourself feel a certain way about a certain thing. People, places and things cannot make you feel a way. Only you can do that. Which is why, oh gosh guys, I'm going to get off topic here. Which is why in the webinar that I did about relationships, I tell people it's really important to understand. You know, you say to somebody, oh you make me feel so angry or you make me feel so sad and people will look at you and it can start these arguments because in intuitively inherently intrinsically we know that people cannot make us feel any way it's how we choose to interpret that information and then it's what we do with that interpretation in regard to our 
feelings and then of course our expression so okay guys let's let's talk a little bit about visualization and imagination which are huge and i keep and i promised i said this in the last one so i'm putting myself out there i am going to do a webinar on imagination it's huge i've already done the visualization but imagination is huge imagination is key to being able to consciously manifest the things that you say that you want but i'm not getting off on topic with that i'm going to stay on topic now guys you can't skip over you may want to argue but you can't skip over this fact that all things made manifest are predicated on a vision or and or images that you have held or hold within your mind and actually i'm going to i'm going to rephrase that it's about the vision or the images that you are holding in your mind and these visions that you are holding in your mind they create the tangible feeling as i said before the feeling or the feeling of the experience that you are wanting to have with your vision in your mind or the vision in your mind is literally converted into the feelings the feelings of desire and based on the intensity of the feelings that are elicited it will turn into it will turn into um belief now as i said before you have a vision in your mind okay and depending on how you feel about that vision it will create a feeling that feeling establishes a relationship and that feeling truly does establish a relationship you know the intensity of the feelings may begin as a wide range of emotions and one of the things that i will say to you is that our emotions are really uh, mercurial you know they 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 go up they go down um what what really ticked us off today will not tick us off tomorrow what made us laugh today will make us cry tomorrow and or be angry so our our emotions again are mercurial and the intensity of our feelings may begin as a wide range of emotions but eventually they are condensed down into a single into a single feeling or condensed down into a single word they become the 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 de- the common denominator the one thing that is constant and that single phrase or that 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 um that power is your belief that single phrase that power is what you choose to believe so your feelings your feelings the desires that you have and the strength of that intensity of that desire it desire is a feeling desire is a feeling and once again when that is condensed down into a single phrase or a single thought a single desire a single want that is the thing that creates your belief and your belief then is what is communicated to the universal creator known to me as the god within me uh it's communicated to the universal creator claiming that this is what you want and not only claiming you have claimed this as the thing that you are wanting to manifest in the tangible form even if it's a a a, a mental or emotional thing no even if it's a mental thing a psychological thing that you want to experience i e peace of mind it's the creation even if it is a physical thing like a house car money that sort of thing that you want to experience it's a tangible thing everything that you manifest is is tangible so I spoke about this before 
All right, guys. Listen up. And I said that I would be speaking about this again. It's really important to know your role in your manifestation process. Okay? Know your role. Know that you are the what and the creator is the how. Know that you are the what and the creator is the how. And once again, in speaking to one of my clients this morning, you know, um, they had some things come up and I'm like, okay, the, the creator has given you not only one, but two directives. You, your what is to make a decision as to which one you want, or if both of them, you want to bring into your life in a tangible way. You see, as you move along, knowing that you are the what, and the universal creator is the how, you are going to be given into it, intuitive insights you are going to be um people are going to give you information things are going to be offered to you things are going to be said to you part of knowing the what or part of your role in consciously manifesting is being open to what it is that you want and being open to what it is, excuse me, being open to manifesting what you want by having or invoking the universal law of expectancy. And the universal law of expectancy, and this is, I'm just paraphrasing here, the universal law of expectancy in regard to what I'm speaking about now means that you need to expect everything. And by expecting everything, what I mean is, or what I'm alluding to is that the universe will speak to you intuitively. The universe will show you things that you need to take action on. So you need to have the expectancy that you will be given information and then you get to act on that information. And once again, that information isn't going to come from the laws, your, your logical, analytical and reasoning mind. That information isn't going to be about anything that you've experienced. It's going to be about something that you need to do, something that you need to say yes or no to, something that you must make a choice about. And that's not the how. In speaking with a group the other day, they, they, they said to me, well, isn't that the how? No, that's not the how. That's not the how. The person who randomly popped up in your life, you know, you're talking to somebody that you've known for ages and they sort of say to you, you know, well, hey, look, I'm thinking that we can, we can do a business adventure uh, venture here. I'm thinking that we, can, we could try something here, Right? This is, this is what I'm thinking. And it's out of the blue. You didn't even know that they had, they had those talent skills or they had that going on. And you've known them for what? 10, 15 years. But everything has aligned correctly. And the universal creator, the universal creator the creator of manifestations is aligning people, places and things. So the thing that you say that you want can come forward. However, it's not as they teach in the laws of attraction where you sit back and you say what you want and it's like, um, and you just sit back. That's BS. And this is why people say it doesn't work. It's, it's absolute BS. No, you need to continue to hold your vision without reservation. 
And when the new things come on board, you add that to the reservation by making a choice. Okay, I'm I'm going to give an instance here. I'm going to I'm going to paint a picture. So picture this, guys. Uh you want you want your own um uh a strawberry strawberry business. You want your own strawberry business. And you know nothing about growing strawberries. But you have decided some some way somehow this vision came to life based on something that clicked in your imagination. You want you, you, you want you want to grow strawberries. You want to sell strawberries. You want to make strawberry jam. You want to make strawberry syrup. You want to sell strawberries dipped in chocolates. You, you it's just strawberries. You love strawberries too, as a food, as a food source. Somebody said, okay, what's your favorite berry? And you like strawberries. Oh, no, cherries. Nope, strawberries. I could lay in a strawberry patch and just be just as happy and eat to my heart's content. But anyway, so it's strawberries. Now you have, you're holding the vision of your strawberry empire, whatever that means to you. And you go to the farmer's market and you see this stall and there's this guy and this oh, this husband and wife team and they're there, you know, and you tell them how much you love strawberries. And they start talking to you about the different types of strawberries or the different variety of strawberries. They also talk to you about a white strawberry and a blue strawberry and how those all came to being. And then they start talking to you about growing strawberries. And then they say to you, well, hey, look, if you are ever in, um, I don't know, if you're ever in the uh, northern part of California or Southern California, we'd really be happy if you just swung by the farm. You know, we have tours and we have, uh, uh, you know, like school students come out there. We'd be really happy. And then they say to you that they live in Temecula. And you're like, oh, my God. That's where my auntie lives my mum's sister lives in Temecula and then they say where in Temecula and you're like oh my giddy aunt if I wasn't lazy I could walk from my aunt's property to the strawberry your strawberry farm who knew there was a farm back up in there you know and so the universe has created for you the paradigm for you to begin your strawberry empire. Lo and behold, you get home from the farmer's market and your mum calls and says, okay, we're going to have the 4th of July at your auntie's in Temecula. We've rented a big house, a big old farmhouse, so the entire family can go. Are you in? Ma, no, you don't have to pay for it, baby. I've got this. You see how it aligns up? And guys, I'm serious. This is how things align up. The, align up. This is how things align. But many people don't see it. Because they're so caught up in there. How am I going to get my strawberry farm? Can I grow strawberries in Las Vegas? Will I need to get a greenhouse? Blah, blah, blah. They're so caught up in it that they miss the process. They're so untrusting of the universal creator and the process. That they continue to want to be the how. Well, you cannot be the how. Because you don't know. You cannot be the how because you don't have that aerial view. You cannot be the how because how does the sun rise? How does the sun set? You tell me. And I'm I'm not talking about scientific theories because most scientific theories are just that, they're theories. Why does the moon wax? Why does it wane? Why will you get a blue moon every once in a while? And yes, they'll give you the scientific thing. But that being said, it's just a theory. 
It's just the theory that fits their narrative. So understand that building your strawberry, your strawberry empire, you now have something else to add to what your role is. And that is to make a decision. And the decision is simple. Are you going to go to the family reunion? Yes. Next question is, are you going to go to the farm? The strawberry farm? Yes. In between now and then, what are you going to do? I'm going to continue to hold my vision. I'm going to see myself at the family reunion and we are having fun. Everybody's there. This is going to be the family reunion of all family reunions. And I'm seeing myself at that farm. I'm so excited already about the possibility of going to the farm. You know, when you get excited about the possibility of doing anything, you're already there. And believe it or not, you've moved on from just being at the farm. Because you're excited and the excitement comes from all the things that you think you're going to see, all the things that you want to learn, all the things that you're going to taste, all the thing, all of it. Because you're already there. So in your mind, it's already manifested. So it has to manifest in the physical. And I hope that I, I've made that clear. I, I'll phrase it this way. All right, guys, and hopefully I'm not too off point, but I'll get back to where I'm going because as I was talking about your role in, in, in the process, but what I'll say is this, you make a choice to go on a vacation. Your part of the choice is how are you going to get to your, your destination and you choose an aeroplane while you are choosing all of that, you are still thinking about your end journey. You're thinking about your destination. And once you start thinking about uh, the hotel and then being on the beach and just reading or just walking along the surf or eating along the um, the promenade or, or, or whatever it is that you're doing or just chilling in your room, you know, just just catching up on sleep, just chilling in your room. When you're thinking about all of that, you've already arrived at your destination and then some. You're already there in your mind. And that's one of the biggest, um, one of the biggest contribution, contributing factors in manifesting is already being there in your mind. You know, if you say that you're going to, uh, you and your girls or you and family, you, you're you going to go to Barbados, you're going to rent a house and you're going to do this and da, 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 da. And you can see the house with the white travertine floors and, you know, the, um, the, the, the breeze, you know, the, 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 the patio, the patio doors that open the whole length of the back of the, 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 um, the property and the breeze just coming in off of the ocean and all of the, you're already there. Not only are you your not only are you at your destination, you are now manifesting things beyond just going on holiday to Barbados or beyond just getting on the plane and going to your vacation destination. And this is how it works. Once you have in your mind gone beyond the thing that you have said that you wanted, it's already yours. So hopefully, guys, I've I've made that clear. But let me just back up. Let me back up. All right, guys. On point and on topic. Let me just back up. It's important to know your role. And once again, in this case, you are the what. And your what is all about what you are wanting to experience. And the creator is the how. And the creator is the how. This is vitally important. It is vitally important. Now, one of the things that I spoke about in our last uh, podcast was invoking the universal law of reversed effort. One of the quickest ways to slow the process and or kill your desired manifestation is to say you want something in one breath 
and then talk about why you can't have it in another. So what do I mean by that? I want a steady income. And then in the next breath, you say, but how am I going to do that? But yet, who's going to employ me? You know, uh, what skill set do I have? Well, the thing that you truly do believe the most is the thing that will manifest for your life. The universal law of reversed effort really states that, well, one, it acknowledges that manifesting takes effort and effort on your part. The fact that you can literally, through a thought, an action, a word, a deed, cancel that out is, I think, something that people really need to... um, really need to be very aware of. You see, because as I said in, in, in my last podcast, this affects your ability not only to affirm and or pray, which for me, prayers are a form of affirmation. It affects your ability to do everything. And so therefore, it's vitally important that you start checking yourself. We spend so much time thinking about all this other stuff. Or put it this way, the race mind. And when I say the race mind, I'm talking about the world. Everything going on the wo- in the world is vying for our attention. Which is why the media are so sensationalized. Or so they use sensationalism to get your attention. You know, the wow factor. But the reality is, guys, you don't need to be wowed by any of that. What you need to be wowed by is you. You need your own attention. So that the law of reversed effort isn't actually um, invoked every five minutes in your life. We wonder why we struggle. We wonder why... How comes that works for them, but it doesn't work for me? Well, they're steadfast. And guys, understand me, hear me clearly when I say that I know that life is going on and that things are going to happen and you're going to have different experiences and yada, 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 and the whole nine yards. Yeah, but even within that, you need to be steadfast. You know, a rock will be out in the elements and will experience everything thunder lightning heat wind people chipping away the whole nine yards but it will remain steadfast and that's like you you have to remain steadfast you have to and when i say steadfast you have to hold on to what you want with both hands knowing that it doesn't matter what they do they could chop your your hands off at the wrist but you would still be holding on You have to remain steadfast. You have to stop invoking the universal law of reversed effort. Now, one of the things that I did say in that show was that should that happen to you, should that happen to you, you know, you you do the whole thing. My thing, I, I, I did a webinar on this. It was called Cancel That. When you remember You cancel and you reinstate. You reinstate through speaking audibly that your desire is on track. Cancel that. No, I am employable. And not only that, what makes me think that I need to be employed so I can have a steady income? What makes you think you need to be employed? And I really mean that. What makes you thinking makes it so? Thinking makes it so. Thinking makes it so. Within the manifestation process, (coughs) 
<coughs> excuse me, within the manifestation process. Let's see, what, what, do, what do I actually want to talk about? Okay, I'm going to say in 2020, I wrote about the universal law of grace, which invokes your ability to stand still and give the fluidity of movement to maneuver through life and remain unharmed. This perhaps is something that people also need to weave into the fabric of their life. The ability to maneuver and move through life and remain unharmed. Being harmed is a thought process. Guys, you need to change your thinking. You need to change your thinking. It's vitally important that as you, as you, um, as you find clarity around the manifestation that you want, that you truly are clear. And this is one of the things that, and I, I'm being really honest, guys, here. This is, this is I'm, I'm not being um, whatever, big-headed or, or, or what have you. But one of the things that I love, and I mean I love about what I do, is when people get their own clarity. I don't do it for you. I love what I do. When people get their clarity and I can see it. And then from there, they can make whatever, ever choice it is that they want to make. They can make whatever choice it is that they want to make. You see, the universal law of manifestation, this law... This law makes that which we have magnetized tangible and physical, or it brings that that we have magnified, uh, sorry, magnetized into tangible and or physical form. The unformed takes on form. In short, it manifests. You see, what, what you're not told about the universal law of um, attraction is it's about magnetism. And this law allows you to attract into your life all other laws, laws plural, required for creating the conscious energetic stream needed to manifest that which you say you you want in your life. You see, guys, it is vitally important. This, this is what I mean about it's important to understand the nature of the laws. Part of the manifestation process is keeping quiet. Why are you telling everybody? You know, this, this, this is a contract between you, <coughs> excuse me, and your universal creator. This is an internal contract between you and and the inner creator within. The universal creator known to me as the God within you. This is a contract between you. The contract between the me, myself and I. So why are you telling people? You don't need anybody to validate anything for you. You must validate it for yourself. This is vitally important. But in, in, in sitting here now and doing this podcast, one of the things that I think I'm going to do is I'm going to start going over the individual laws. Um, I haven't done that for many, many, many years. Uh, I want to say what, since 2007, 2008, something like that. But I actually think it's time to start readdressing the laws so that you can have a greater understanding of the laws of attraction and how they impact your life. So getting what you want and using the laws of attraction, once again, the the methodology is simple, okay? It's simple. 
it boils down to you need to know first and foremost what it is that you want so it starts with choice that's the first law so you need to know what it is that you want you need to know what it looks like you need to know what it feels like you need to know what it sounds like you need to know what it tastes like you need to know what it smells like smells like and you need to know what your sixth sense is telling you you need to know what your intuition is saying to you and as it had been brought to my attention that anything that i now want to manifest is um something new so my reasoning my logical analytical and reasoning minds won't come into play and that's very true but what literally comes into play is your imagination you get to imagine what it will feel like you know you've never been a millionaire before or or you might have but if you are wanting to be a millionaire you can use your imagination to create that feeling it's your feeling it's your feeling. It's not anybody else's. People can't tell you what that's going to feel like. So your imagination plays a huge role, a huge role in your manifestation process. So once again, you need to know what you're wanting. So you need to engage your senses in your imagine in in your imaginary no your imaginary yeah there, there you go in your imaginary realm not engage your senses on what it feels like to be in the sun but what does it feel like to be in baha in the sun with with you know the 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 wind blowing off of the ocean and you can feel the sun but it doesn't feel normal it doesn't feel like the normal sun it's the sun of your dreams and your vacation that is the difference so guys before I go because I'm going to wrap this up so before I go I want to read to you if I can pull it up I want to read to you I want to read to you um, a meme. Once a day, I post the meme on Instagram, uh, Twitter, and uh, Facebook. Those are those are my primary ones. And these memes, I I don't post quotes. It's very rare that I post qu quotes from other people. These are all quotes that I have created myself. So what I wanted to say to you. What I wanted to say to you is simply this. I'm still pulling it up, guys. Forgive me. That talks about not being ready. I wanted to say to you is this. Your body will only reflect what you think, believe and feel about yourself. You cannot reflect or show anything out outwardly that you do not think inwardly now a couple of people are like wow but that's a fact you cannot reflect outwardly anything that you don't feel inwardly the only thing that you can reflect on your screen of space on your life canvas is what's going on inside of you so guys if you want your external world and that includes your body, people, places, things, relationship, finance, um, relationships, finance, health, wealth, um, living condition, whatever it is. If you want it to be different, you have to think differently. Actually, you need to think it as it is that you want it so it can manifest. 
so that's my meme and I decided that guys for the for the most part I'm going to try and leave you either start out with a meme or end with a meme so once again your body will only reflect what you think believe and feel about yourself so guys if you need to get hold of me um you can do so at any of the um the social media sites that I spoke of Instagram Dr Wendy um, Facebook, Dr. Wendy, YouTube, uh, Dr. Wendy, you, you can, you can find me there. And of course you can, um, email me at Dr. Wendy D at gmail.com or Dr. Wendy at it's my life, my Um, my website is being overhauled. There are lots of exciting things that are happening. Um, I, I've got an educational side, all, all sorts of things are happening there. So it's a process, it's a process, but it's moving along. So guys, I'm Dr. Wendy Dearborn. Thank you for taking the time out to listen to this podcast. Until next time, guys, love you all. Peace.